I think as far as my learning curve goes, I throw myself into things. And it, in the Front Range, the Bureau of Mines, or the folks that were left over from the Bureau of Mines, track the production, and they track the location of existing operations. And so it was very easy <clears throat> to see where this is being done. And so the next question that comes about is, well, we know physically where it's being done. What kind of rock is it being done in? Uh, and what are the problems that go along with it? And that's where, it, that's where it starts to get tricky. And basically, what I wanted to do was first learn as much as I could about that industrial mineral. And so uh, collectively uh, with a, a, a couple other scientists, primarily Anna Wilson, we went and put together some papers looking at the history of industrial minerals. I've, I've done the same thing with aggregate. To, for, for me to understand a commodity, I have to see how it's changed over time. Right. And I looked at the very first time when, when people were using aggregate, I mean, I, Stone Age, everybody likes to go back to the right. I mean, realistically, yeah. in, before we had good roads, and starting with the good roads movement, and then the interstate highways, and all the way through to, to see what happened. Well, I did the same thing with industrial minerals in the, in the front range. Mm -hmm. Which state, uh, I mean, which uh, counties, or wh where had they been, been produced in the front range? And we quickly learned, well, there, 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 weren't, there wasn't enough data just in the front range to understand this. So I went through the, we went through the whole 17 western states and looked at the industrial minerals. And then you start seeing where things are being done, that, that New Mexico does uh, perlite, and, and uh, Washington does diatomaceous earth. And then you say, well, what's driving these markets? I mean, somebody didn't just wake up some morning and say, I'd, I'd like some perlite. Mm -hmm. what, what's driving the market? Well, and, and how, it, strangely enough, perlite as an example, wasn't even on anybody's radar until the, the 1940s. It's a, perlite is something that you buy in a bag, it's white, it looks like puffed wheat or yeah. puffed rice, yeah. but it's a rock. And in, in the mid 40s, there's two stories of how it was developed, and I'll go with the one I like. Okay. And, and that was that a, a geologist was sitting on a beach in, in an island in Greece, a volcanic island in Greece, Milos, and had a campfire there. And the got, fire got real hot and started popping the rocks and said, hey, maybe we can use this. And they decided they would start, you know, what can we use it for? And it became a, a lightweight aggregate with all kinds of uses. Well, it quickly caught on, and, and many Western states have sources of, of perlite. Uh, over, uh, but over time, and so does Greece, where they found it. Well, Greece tried to, uh, the problem is it's heavy mm -hmm. until you pop it, and then it's bulky. And so how do you get it from western states where we want it, or where it exists, to the eastern states where we want it? Well, you move it in a railroad car when it's heavy. Because, I mean, you can't afford to ship empty. You know, a 100-ton railroad car with five tons of perlite popped in it. So the popping plants are all where it's needed. And for a while, rail worked. And they tried bringing it from Greece, but they just couldn't maintain a, a supply. Well, they came up with the idea of just-in-time supply. And so now they'll bring it from Greece, drop it off at a, at a U.S. popping plant, and pop it so it's not going from the West. So now we're importing large amounts of perlite from Greece. Mm. Well, some things have happened to that market recently, and the U.S. market is picking up. In fact, we're now exporting to Canada, and Greece is not taking it to Canada, not bringing it here. So we're, it, it's, it's cutting to the market. Well, that. Those kinds of things, and I use perlite as an example, those are the kinds of things that make the market of industri make industrial minerals interesting and something that as a geologist, if you understand those things, then you can worry less about physically where it exists and more like the properties. What does it need to do to, to pop? Right. I mean, another example would be lightweight aggregate made from heating clay. Well. Clay does one of two things when you heat it. It either turns into a brick yeah. or it blows up into lightweight aggregate. There are no mineralogical associations between which it does. It's like, how do you know? Really? Experience. Really? Really. And so, you know, some of these things as a geologist, it makes your life 
complicated. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to understand those things uh, in, in figuring out how geology can be brought to bear. But the bottom line that you need to understand and convey to the people is that Mother Nature puts it where Mother Nature wanted it. Right. And, it and not in my backyard. If it's in your backyard, that may be the only place it is. Mm -hmm. And we have to learn how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the biggest things that I find about industrial minerals uh, as far as the mining. Sure, there's, there's issues that relate to the, the geologic structure nicely layered simple geology is easier to mine than contorted geology and that sort of thing. But miners know that, Ge well, some of them do. Uh, but most geologists do, but I try to reach these other niches where people kind of forget about them mm -hmm. and bring them to the forefront and, and educate people. And, and the other people, part is to just let people know yeah. that when they brush their teeth in the morning, they're putting rocks in their mouth. Right. Well, I, I, uh, it sounds, again, it sounds to me that you've got a bit of an economist in your blood there. <laughs> you're, th you're thinking about access to markets, you're thinking about distance, you're thinking about mode of travel, and, and, uh, and in addition to the geology, so the geology becomes the piece of a larger uh, social, political, and economic puzzle. And Absolutely. That, and that's the, you like the puzzle solving, but you like your puzzles complex. Yes, I think you hit on it. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. kind of not looked at it that way, yeah, but you're right. It, it